Yes, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Wallino channel. It's been a minute since I've been on here, but guess what? We are back with the Chelsea content and for a good reason because we have our proper first test of the season. Now, what do I mean by this? We, of course, will be playing Liverpool this Sunday at 8.30 American time, a little bit later for you guys in England. However, nevertheless, a Chelsea fan is a Chelsea fan and I will be there to support the team and see us possibly get a result over at Anfield and prove whether Chelsea is as good as we are claiming them to be. This is going to be our first real test of the season and let me tell you why. Manchester City, we all know, was going to be a fluke game whether we won it, whether we tied it, or whether we ended up losing it like we did. That game we didn't have anything prepared whatsoever yet under Enzo Maresca. Very new to the team, had a very poor preseason in terms of results, and he was just getting adapted to his life at Chelsea. We hadn't finalized all the transfers. Everything was kind of in a total chaos. Now, fast forward to the games after that. We've played Crystal Palace. We've played Nottingham Forest. We've gotten results against Wolves. We've gotten a great result against West Ham. Tons and tons of games have been played. And our only other loss besides our first Man City game was the return leg of the Conference League game against Servette. Listen, that's not a game we took very seriously. We all know we ended up passing. Now we're in the next round of the Conference League, and we're going to be playing Panathinaikos soon in the Conference League. Now, Liverpool, first place in the Premier League. Liverpool are in first place in the Premier League right now. We are currently sat in fourth place. We are a few points behind them, as we all know. We have some catching up to do, but we are in a positive Turn of events in the season. We did not expect this to be Enzo Maresca's start. Especially me. I thought we were going to have a very poor start to the season. And considering that we got some okay in terms of difficulty games out of the way. Now comes the real test. Not only against Liverpool, which you see right here. But we are going to be playing against Panathinaikos. Then we have Newcastle in the Premier League. Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. After that is Man United. Then the easy game of Noah in in the Conference League. I've never heard of that team. And of course, after we have Arsenal. So we're playing three of the big six teams in the Premier League in our next four Premier League matches. So definitely going to be a period for us to see whether this Chelsea team can perform to the level we expect them to perform. Whether we're still going to need experience in the team because these young players are not up for the challenge of playing against the best of the best or whether we have the proper squad to go ahead and challenge for the Champions League. We're going to be discussing all that in today's video, as well as my prediction for the game, my lineup for who I believe should start, and all the news leading up to this Liverpool clash on Sunday. So without further ado, let's get right to it, boys. Now, the last time we won at Anfield was actually under, as we all know, the new England manager, Thomas Tuchel. And Tuchel as we all know, was an absolute genius. He had a game plan for every single game. He executed most of the freaking damn time, nine out of 10 times, we executed under Tuchel. And as he said, we will build a team that nobody wants to play against. I'm sure he's gonna do the same with England, but that was definitely the case with us at Chelsea, which is the reason why our last win at Anfield was under him. Funnily enough, this guy scored. Mason Mount, the guy who's doing very poorly at Manchester United right now. But it is a fact that we last went at Anfield three years ago in March 2021. We all remember that Mason Mount winner tuck, cutting in from the left-hand side and curling it into the far right corner of the goal. Now we barely have any players from that squad that won the game. Liverpool still have a ton of players from that squad. They still have Alisson, Van Dijk, Alexander-Arnold, Robertson, Mo Salah, Curtis Jones, tons of guys. Now, obviously, our team has changed drastically since that game. And there have been some player exits that have occurred in that time. Now, we have been rumored of another player exit, which was basically confirmed in the summer when Enzo Maresca stated that Chilwell was not in his plans anymore. He ended up staying. We couldn't transfer him out. However, there is news now that Chilwell might have a possible destination in, some, in the January transfer window. Check this out. So according to football transfers, Leicester City are keen on a loan deal for Ben Chilwell to bolster their struggling defense. The left back is open to the idea of a move due to his limited playing time at Chelsea. 
and there's a picture of Chili. Listen, I think this would be a fantastic move for Chili. Obviously, not in Maresca's plans whatsoever. He's behind in the left back pecking order, not only to Cucurella, but now to Renato Vega as well. Maresca doesn't seem to think he could invert. I still think this guy has a lot to offer in the top level of football. However, he will have to take a step back in order to get playing time. Injuries have absolutely ruined his career for the past two seasons at the minimum. He hasn't been consistently available, just like his wingback partner on the other side, Reese James. And this has been at a detriment to him. He hasn't been able to perform at the level that he had been performing at under, funnily enough, Thomas Tuchel when we last won at Liverpool. And although he is a guy with a ton of experience that's won huge trophies at Chelsea, playing in all our big games and has been a big part of our club's success in our history, I think this will be the right move for Chile. Going back to the team where he grew up in, the team that brought him through his academy, where he actually got a Premier League winner's medal under Claudio Ranieri at Leicester City. And I'm sure Leicester City fans would take him back, even though he did celebrate against them when he scored in the FA Cup final, the goal which didn't count. But I do think this would be a good fit, not only for Chelsea, for Enzo Maresca, for Ben Chilwell, and for Leicester City as well. So pretty interesting news there. Let me know what you guys think of that. Next up, some fake news. Don't believe this. It says by Football Insider that Christopher Nkunku could push for a Chelsea exit next summer if he doesn't break into the first 11. I think that's the case for any player in any football club. If you are not playing consistently, you will look and explore your other options. Is this Christopher Nkunku's fault to think like this? I don't think so. I think this is the way any footballer in the world thinks. If you're not playing, you're not going to be want to be at that club for very long. However, he's banging in goals. Nicholas Jackson has slowed down just a little bit. And I think Christopher Nkunku might just start against Liverpool. He scored in our last game at Anfield. Actually, his first goal for Chelsea, if I'm not mistaken. And listen, this guy, we know how much quality he has. He's not playing in his preferred position. He's battling it out for the striker role with Nicholas Jackson. Cole Palmer is obviously our undisputed number 10. Unluckily for Nkunku, who's so, so good. But you just can't put Cole Palmer on the bench at all. So he has to battle. He has to show Enzo Maresca that he deserves to start over Nicholas Jackson. Am I of the opinion that he should already be starting over him? I definitely am. I think he just has heaps more of quality. However, Nicholas Jackson does offer some things that Nkunku doesn't offer us in terms of that change of pace in behind. In terms of that kind of, I don't know. He's just a very different type of player than Nkunku. And I think Enzo Maresca likes the variety that both of them can offer and we'll see who will start against Liverpool. Let me know in the comments who you think deserves to start. Now, a guy that Thomas Tuchel is trying to poach from us, because we all know he still has Chelsea in his heart, is Enrique Hilario. Obviously, our former goalkeeper in the past, now our goalkeeping coach for several years. He is being poached by by Thomas Tuchel for the, for the England job as being their goalkeeper coach. He obviously thinks he did a very good job with him at Chelsea. Not only him, but I believe our fitness coach as well is is uh, on the radar of Thomas Tuchel. However, Chelsea will only allow them to join England if it's on a full-time basis because we don't want them to kind of be half-focused on England, half-focused on Chelsea. That might affect results for our goalkeepers who, at the moment, we don't know if Sanchez is going to have a good game or a bad game. It's kind of 50-50 with that, so we want some security. We want either them to leave and they'll have our full respect, go on and do the English country proud in the World Cup and do a good job or stay with Chelsea and give your 100% commitment to Chelsea. So I understand this way of thinking by our club and I completely agree with it 100%. But interesting that Tuchel still admires his former Chelsea colleagues. Now, on to one of Tuchel's former Chelsea colleagues, player actually. It's Reese James. Look, man, this guy is fit for the game. I expect him to play 100%. I'll let you know if I'm starting him or bringing him off the bench for the Liverpool game in just a bit. So stay tuned for that. But one interesting thing here that I'm actually going to zoom into so you guys could get a better look at is that Reese James is skinny as hell now. Reese James has lost some muscle and I think this has been on purpose in order to slim down and possibly reduce the risk of injury. We all know Reese James has been a very bulky player ever since his second season at Chelsea. His first year under Frank Lampard, he was relatively slim for the kind of build that he naturally has. Obviously, he easily puts on a ton of muscle, as we could tell. He's kind of that type of person that is it's very easy for him to gain weight. 
um but we've seen he's probably changed up his diet and his workout routine just a little bit hopefully he's more agile now uh he's not as so robust and he could move around more swiftly without being fearful of injury this seems like a positive sign to me kind of gives me flashbacks like i said to reese james in his debut season as a 19 year old under frank lampard in 2019 and hopefully he continues playing and staying injury free like he did in that first season so cross our fingers hopefully reese stays fit at least for the liverpool game let's see how that goes now now on to my liverpool preview this was their last starting 11 that they used i believe in was it the carabao cup something like that i forgot but they had alison in goal who's injured now alexander arnold konate van dyke and simikas who did get subbed off for robertson so robertson is completely fine their strongest back line on paper they are just gonna have coman kelleher who by the way always plays unbelievable when he plays against us i don't know why this guy always plays like the best number two goalkeeper in the world uh, but besides that fact, they have McAllister, Gravenberch, who's been a revelation under Arnest Slot this year, Curtis Jones in the 10, Salah, Gakpo, and Jota. We could have Luis Diaz in there. We could have Darwin Nunez. Definitely tons of options. Even Federico Chiesa might get a shout. But this team, we all know, is freaking quality. They're top of the league for a reason. They've only conceded, what, two goals, three goals in the entire Premier League season so far. So obviously, their defense is their strongest point. But it's funny, it's kind of a battle of unstoppable force, which is Chelsea's attack versus the immovable object of Liverpool's defense. I'm not saying Liverpool doesn't have a fantastic attack, but right now their strong suit is their defense, which is why they're top of the league. Um, but listen, man, it's going to be a very interesting game, 100%. And this is why I'm going with this exact lineup for us to get a result at Liverpool. 4-2-3-1, I'm going with Robert Sanchez in goal. Hopefully he could perform just like how he did against Forrest. Keep the ball out of the back of the net. I'll be happy. Don't risk playing those ridiculous passes. Please, Sanchez. Don't give me heart attacks. At right back, Reese James. I'm throwing him in the deep end right away. I need him to mark Liverpool's winger. And I think he'll do a much better job than Malagusto at the moment. Who, yes, could offer some stuff offensively. But defensively, he's not as solid as Reese. Two center backs, Colwell and Fofana. They're going to have to... Deal with Diogo Jota, who we all know is a very shifty forward. So it's going to be a tough task for them to do. They're both international players now, so I expect them to be able to deal with that. Uh, Kukureya at left back, he's going to have to deal with Mo Salah. He's going to have a very tough day in the office. But Kukureya has proven within the past six months that he could lock down some of the best wingers in world football. He's shown it against Bukayo Saka. He's done it against Jeremy Doku, Phil Foden. He's done a good job against these guys. And I trust in Kuku to at least limit some of Mo Salah's actions this weekend. In the middle is where I'm kind of concerned. Enzo Fernandez, I was debating whether to start Romeo Lavia right here. And the only reason as to why I did not was because he is still kind of coming back from his injury a little more than Reese James. I don't trust Rav Lavia to start right away, even though I do think he's freaking quality and deserves to start over Enzo. So the only reason why I'm giving Enzo, honestly, one of his final shots to start is because he needs to prove himself that he deserves that starting 11 role. And in my opinion, this is one of his last opportunities, man. We need to see Enzo Fernandez be free, man. We need to see him express himself on the pitch, play like he did in our first game of the season under Poch last year against Liverpool. He was unreal that day. But we haven't seen Enzo perform like that in a very long time. So fingers crossed he's on his game. Moises Caicedo, obviously the double pivot that Liverpool thought they were going to get in the transfer window is now with us. I expect him to have a big, big game trying to deal with the likes of Jones, uh, McAllister, and Gravenberch. It's going to be a tough ask. But if there's anyone in the Premier League that could lock down any midfielder, it's Moises Caicedo at the moment. At the 10, our star boy Cole Palmer keep producing. Hopefully he has... A goal against Liverpool now. I don't believe he scored against them yet. On the left, Jaden Sancho. I hope he cooks uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. That'll be a very fun matchup to watch. Madueca on the right versus Robertson. We're going to see how our wingers do against the best defense in the Premier League. Are we really as good as we think in attack? And up top, Christopher Nkunku. We need quality. We need a guy that, although, yes, he did miss a freaking sitter against Nottingham Forest last week. I trust him more to put away the limited chances that I do believe we will get against Liverpool than Nicholas Jackson. If there's one guy in our team that I trust to put away 
a 1v1 opportunity that we might get one time against Liverpool, it's Christopher Nkunku and not Nicholas Jackson, just because this guy, in my opinion, is our only other world-class player besides Cole Palmer. So let me know what you guys think of the lineup right there, and let me give you my score prediction. So my score prediction for Liverpool-Chelsea, if I'm talking with my heart, I'm going to tell you it's going to be a tie. My heart tells me a tie. However, in this channel, I like using logic most of the time over heart. Sometimes I get too angry or too excited and I use heart. But for this instance, since we're a few days away from the game, not too hyped right now, I'm going to use logic. My logic, unfortunately, tells me, guys, that we will lose to Liverpool. And I'm going with a three. Oh, I'm going with a two nil score. I just think Liverpool is far too good for us to deal with at the moment. I do love the improvement I've seen in the team. However, this test I think will be too tough for us. I'm just being real. And I'm not going to go into this game expecting even a point. I expect this to lose. I hope Chelsea prove me wrong. I hope Nkunku is on one. I hope Enzo Fernandez balls out like we have been expecting him to. But in all honesty, I'm predicting a Chelsea 2-0 loss, which will hurt. It will hurt me because I love this club and I want to see us challenge for trophies. However, I just don't think we're there yet. And line for line, I think Liverpool just outshines us in terms of quality, except for the number 10 role where we have Cole Palmer and they have, um, what's his name? Curtis Jones. But listen, guys, I hope the boys prove me wrong. Very young team against a very experienced team. Two new coaches that are bald battling it out against each other. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of who will win this game and why and what would be your starting 11. But without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully we have the three points by then. And yeah, guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what was your favorite part. I'll see you guys in the next one and peace.